what's up guys and girls this is Phil Ebner with videoschoolonline.com bringing you another video creator spotlight today I'm chatting with Evan Abrams of evanabrams.com and his YouTube channel search Evan Abrams in YouTube and you'll find a channel full of amazing After Effects tutorials I've learned so much from him and I really look up to him it was a blast chatting with him. We talked for over an hour and all of his stuff is golden. We talked about all sorts of different things from After Effects, starting a YouTube channel, teaching online, making money online, how to improve your videos. So check out each video. I've separated the interview out into six individual videos. So once you're done with this one, move on to the next one. Thanks a lot and here's Evan. Yeah, so uh, this came back to a lot of things I was doing um, with like sketch comedy back in the day and we found regardless of, of like if you're gonna make a fake news program it doesn't matter if the fake news program looks absolutely real it doesn't matter if it looks like CNN if your jokes suck it's still a bad program right there's no way you can ever get around having horrible content so the phrase that we use is putting lipstick on a pig. So you can put lipstick on a pig all day long. No one is going to want to fuck that pig because it's still a pig, right? Um, but motion graphics kind of have a very polarizing thing to them. So usually when people come to me and they say, what can I do with motion graphics to make my content look more professional? Well, I say the first, first thing you have to do is... Make sure the footage or whatever you're doing that you're putting on top of this is is good. Like, make sure it's shot well. Make sure that the script is good. Make sure that you're editing tight. And when you've spent all of your time on all of these things, you're probably very tired and you think, I don't need to put motion graphics on because it looks fine. Um, and that's usually when people think, ooh, I should gussy this up. You know, I should put some zazz on this. Well, then motion graphics may start to take away from what you've got, right? So a bad lower third, if it, if it just looks like, you know, some scribbles, or maybe it, it doesn't have the same branding and it doesn't uh, add to the same message of the piece, then it's taking away from it. So uh, I say this to clients all the time that, uh, you know, because I like talking myself out of work, that uh, if... If it's not adding something to the piece, don't do it. The way that motion graphics help are they increase uh, branding. So having a nice, slick 5 to 10 second intro at the start of something. Very good. That's a good thing that you want. It doesn't take up much time. And it can add a high amount of return for what you're doing. Like having the same thing at the start of a vlog is very helpful because it makes your blog your vlog look very professional and it can communicate more information than nothing would communicate, right? You can easily put like your Twitter handle, you can put a website and put stuff like that. So you're adding information, you're adding tone, you're adding substance to what you're doing. Um, but in some instances, uh, if an intro is terrible, you know, let's say you're doing a tech blog and your intro looks pretty stock and worthless, like it's, it's just a template of some kind, and the people are able to sort of see the cracks on this thing, then you're turning people off of the content that's going to happen after. So if you graph people's emotional states as they're observing your video, they're like, hmm, good, 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 bad. And then it stays bad for the rest of it, right? Um, people, assuming everybody comes into the video at the same like baseline, they neither hate nor enjoy your video until they've seen it. Um, and this is true not just for web stuff, but if it's a TV show, if it's a promo material, if it's anything. If it doesn't have strong foundational elements, you can't save it in post. Um, there was a thing, you know, back when we were making news programs and such, um, that we can't turn crap into gold. Um, if someone comes to me with footage, the footage is all over the place, I can smooth it out a little bit. You know, we gotta, we gotta make the trade off that it's not gonna be as high quality after I smooth it, but the footage is crap. So, do you wanna use it? Do you wanna edit around it? Do you end up spending more resources trying to fix something that's broken? Um, the, one of the powers of After Effects is that you can shape up a lot of crappy footage, uh, provided that it still has the stuff there. But when we're talking about things like 
let's say you want to do an animation, you want to explain something with an animation. Well, you want to make sure that the script is solid before you go through the rest of the process. And you want to make sure the voiceover is solid before you go through the rest of the process. Because After Effects is, is not, you know, it, the greatest designer can't make, <laughs> can't make something good out of nothing. And uh, unless, so this is the caveat, unless the focus of the piece is only on an effect, right? So if you look at, we talked about the earlier YouTube people. So look at Freddie Wong's earlier stuff. And you'll see that the focus of it is a crudely crafted narrative around showing off how great this effects work is, right? So if the focus of the piece is effects, then the effects can save it because that is the content, right? So always, if you're making a video, ask yourself, what is the content? What is the central message? How do I shape everything else around and pointing to this central idea? So in that way, motion graphics will help you most in your videos if they are all enforcing a central theme. If they're not enforcing that idea, you need to not use them. So look at uh, uh, some Wes Anderson stuff, right? So Wes Anderson movies, they certainly use uh, After Effects, they use titles, but their titles are not flashy. Uh, their titles are not um, in any way impressive, except that they have good design fundamentals and they enforce the, theme, the thematic elements of what you're seeing on screen. So someone using After Effects, After Effects is just a tool, right? It's like a hammer or a screwdriver, just a really advanced hammer or screwdriver. Uh, a hammer in the wrong hands uh, can smash a screw through some drywall and ruin your drywall, or you can go find the correct tool and put that in. So it's up to the person to come up with ideas and to use those ideas to make their own stuff. So. It's um yeah, that's all good stuff. Uh, it, it adds <laughs> gold. I I feel like I'm I'm at this spot where I've been doing after using After Effects for a few years, um, but I'm still at that phase of like, oh wow, the shape layer like all you can do with shape layers is extremely awesome. I'm gonna put shape layer effects on every single video that that I'm making, and like all like because I work um, for UC Berkeley. Um, mm. as one of their video guys and their main After Effects guy and we'll come up with a script and and everything but I don't know if we're making sure that the script and the voiceover is really that good it's just like in the in the end I see oh I, I can do these cool graphics and stuff but yeah everything you said is <laughs> I'm learning a lot right now this is great yeah well the big thing that I think Everybody goes on that curve, right? No matter whether you're a whether you're a painter, whether you're a writer, everybody comes in, they shoot big, they basically throw up all over whatever they're doing, um, and then eventually they learn restraint and refinement in the latter stages of their career. Um, when people like, if you're just a couple years in, you're really you're still finding your style, you're still finding your voice. To finding your voice, whatever. Fuck, I don't know. That's as hokey as that sounds. It's true though that eventually people will will settle into a pattern, or they will simply learn to restrain themselves in the way that they're applying things. So, certainly when I started out, I threw the kitchen sink at a lot of projects. So if someone would come to me asking for a map to be made. I'd be like, oh man. Have I got a map for you? Check this out. Lord of the Rings style. This shit is 3D. And they're like, yeah, that's pretty confusing for the audience. Don't you think? Don't you think there's too much stuff there? I'm like, hmm, that's true. All right, well, rein it back. And one of the things that helps in reining things in is the idea of time. So how, much, how many hours are you going to devote to one thing, right? Um, you know, eight hours is too many hours. That's a whole day. You spent your whole day making one map? Fuck you. You need to go do some other work. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be done. But early on, we have a, a desire to create precious things. Um, and precious things that are... Rep we want to show off how good we are at things. And 
like I still have this problem that like I'm, I'm working on a client piece and I think at the end of it, ugh, I could, I could do way better if just, if I just did more of this stuff, but, but at the end of the day, the client is happy with what it is. Right. And their taste will determine what gets paid for. <laughs> so, um, when you are not the ultimate decider of that thing, then it helps to learn restraint and uh, gain editing. But yeah, um, what kind of things do you make for, for Berkeley? Is it... So I work in their communications department, and then I also work sort of for an internal educational technology department. And hmm. so I'm kind of promote, doing a lot of promotional videos um, for just the different services that the campus provides, like webcasting or uh online learning or the rate radio station or whatever so it's pretty it's, cool. a, it's a pretty cool cool job yeah um so we've gone through one of our questions um right. so nailed it yeah <laughs> um the next couple should be a little bit quicker but uh so we'll find out yeah we'll see <laughs> the next question is what is your favorite after effect technique this could be anything from an, a specific effect a plug-in tool or just something that you always do with after effects uh, yeah uh yeah so uh i'd say the most recent thing would be the shape layers that have really come into their own before you had to basically go from after effects take it into illustrator or photoshop